Good morning. Welcome to worship on this July 4th weekend. Sometime in the midst of family and food and fireworks, remember our freedom as well that we celebrate this weekend. Just a few announcements to lift up, and we have a lot of things going on, even though it's summer. Um, we have a celebration of a 41st anniversary for Randy and Carrie Smith, so we celebrate with them. Also coming up on October, or October, <laughs> July, 17th is our outdoor worship service, so please note that Sunday we won't be here, we'll be at the Beckers. Uh, Christmas in July coming up on the 24th, uh, yoga and the crafters. Uh, for the outdoor worship, we do ask that you sign up for that, either on the, the sign up at the back or online, so that we know how many to plan for. Uh, coming up on July 31st is Undie Sunday. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So we're collecting uh, underwear for uh, local school age children. And August will be backpack month, so we'll be watching for that as well as we continue to do our ministry all throughout the summer. Let us rise for the confession. <clears throat> we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing your opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray. 
O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our nation may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the 66th chapter of Isaiah. Those who returned from the exile found that the hopes for the glorious restoration of Judah were not completely fulfilled. For these disappointed people, the prophet envisions salvation in the image of a nursing woman. Mother Jerusalem and a mothering God remind the community how they are sustained and supported. And now the reading. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her. That you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. That you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm, and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Please read with me responsibly Psalm 66. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds toward all people. Ruling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. The second reading is from the sixth chapter of Galatians. In the close of his letter to the Galatians, Paul encourages them to live as people made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Here Paul offers practical advice about how believers exercise common concern for one another in the family of faith. And now for the reading. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work rather than their neighbor's work will become a pause, cause for pride, for all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Lord, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we all will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised. Only that may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision 
nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the tenth chapter. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. 
and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. I know we don't have any children this morning, but we're still going to have a children's sermon. So. so what season of the year are we in? Good Traveling season, vacation season, right? So you have to pack up. So I'm married to a nurse, so I have a list of things when we go on vacation. So there's the list for the kitchen staples, because we usually take our camper, all, you know, all the stuff, spaghetti, rice, peanut butter. And then on the back, there's the list of the refrigerator items like milk and cream and eggs. And then the freezer items like ice cream. We've got to have ice cream. And then we have the clothes. So you have all these clothes, you know, and bug spray and screen, sunscreen and makeup. I've got to remember my makeup and jewelry and Crocs and sweatpants and bike helmets and stuff for the cat and Instapot. This, this is the list we start with. So we don't forget anything, right? Because you don't want to forget anything when you go on vacation. That would be a terrible thing. You'd have to go to the store or Walmart and buy more stuff. So Jesus sent 70 out and said, don't take nothing. Don't take anything. But take the word that I'm sending with you. I'm sending you like sheep among wolves, but take the word, the message that I'm sending you with and bring peace. And some places are going to receive you with peace. Give them peace back. Some aren't shake it off as a dust and a judgment against them. So when we go and travel with Jesus, it's a lot different than this, um, but it's a different kind of travel. It's a different kind of journey. It's a mission that he sends us on. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you call us to be missionaries, to carry your message to the world. Give us guidance and strength to carry that ministry and that mission to all those who are ready to receive it. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the living Christ. If you have purchased or leased a new vehicle or nearly new vehicle in the last five years, things have changed a bit, right? It used to be that the best advice that I gave to the newly licensed drivers in our house was read your owner's manual from cover to cover. It's like the Bible for your car. And it shows you all the shortcuts you're going to need to know about that vehicle. It's been six years or so since we purchased a new car. We tend to drive our cars till the wheels fall off. And on my wife's first car, which was a 75 Dodge Dart, one nearly did. We were coming back from Minnesota to see my roommate when we were on internship, and I learned something that I should have learned earlier in my marriage, and that's when my wife says, the car is making a funny noise. I should listen. I should listen. Guys, you should listen. The spindle was coming apart on the front wheel of that car, and the tire was going like this. And we found a place, believe it or not, in Fairview, Minnesota, on a Saturday, with a mechanic that was open, that went to the junkyard and spent three hours fixing that car so we could get back to North Dakota. I'm not sure you even get an owner's manual with cars nowadays. I think you probably just get an app on your phone that you can look up all those issues. One of my former parishioners actually had to have an orientation for her car. She had to sit for an hour and go through all of the parts for her new car. Those shortcuts are helpful when it comes to new cars, and I expect that's the case with our faith as well. And in a way, that's what we see in our gospel for this morning. If you want to know all you need to know, all you need to do, all you need to complete 
for that mission that Jesus calls us to, it's here. It's here in those few short verses. For instance, we hear the work is urgent. There's not time to waste. The harvest is ready. It won't be easy. In fact, you're like lambs among wolves. And you shouldn't take much to do this mission. No cash, no credit cards, no change of clothes, no extra pair of shoes for that matter, not your cell phone or your vehicle or your Facebook page. On the other hand, you will have a companion with you. You go out two by two in our gospel. And you do have a script, and it's a simple script. The message that you are to declare is peace wherever you go. Paul went into great detail about how to live out that peace in our second reading to those young believers in Galatia. And they had this big controversy about circumcision or uncircumcision, who was in and who was out. And he said, you know, none of that really matters. What matters is this. Those of you who have received the Spirit, if you see a brother or sister in a transgression, you are to restore them in gentleness. You are to bear one another's burdens. You must test your own work, and then that work, and not your neighbor's work, is what is a cause for pride. All must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap what you sow. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we'll reap at the harvest if you don't give up. So whenever you have a chance, whenever you have an opportunity, work for the good of all, especially those in the family of faith. And then Jesus adds at the end of his instructions, we also simply need to accept the gifts of those who welcome us. No shopping around for a better offer. And again, he says, it won't be easy. Sometimes when you think the harvest is ready, it won't be. At least of the responses of those who are less than welcoming or any indication. But we're not in charge of how people respond. That's up to God. You and I are just the messengers. We speak on behalf of Jesus. It's all right there in that gospel reading. Jesus sends them out in pairs, so this is not a work to be done alone. We need people we need people to pray with us, to pray for us, to join us in this work of ministry. And much more can be done together than by ourselves. And Jesus also sends them out with a word of peace. This peace is the same salute that comes from the Old Testament, where King David's servants extended to the Calebite clan on the fringe of Israel as they were coming into their country. And he said to them, Peace be to you, peace be to your house, peace to all that you have. That's a whole lot of peace. And it's amazing. It's an official declaration of the blessings that come from God. So let me ask you, when people come through these doors, are they welcomed? Do they experience the joy of Christ in our worship, in our singing, in our sharing and preaching of the word in this supper that Jesus offers us? Are all of these the same simple gifts the 70 had to offer so long ago? Are people still reached in the same way? With kindness? With welcome? With a message of peace? And finally, what I hear in this passage is Jesus' words about the harvest being plentiful. There's so much talk and discussion about, you know, the church as we know it is failing. They said that back in 2000. Here we are 22 years later. We're still here. There still is a harvest out there. There are still people that need to hear about Jesus. There are still people that are struggling with despair and loneliness and spiritual battles. And we dare not wait a moment longer. And Jesus says we shouldn't be choosy in our sharing. He just says, like Nike, do it. Just do it. And leave the results up to God. 
But most of all, when I consider this story, I stand in wonder at the place and privilege and the joy that you and I have in sharing the story of God. At least that is the way it is told, and when we're reminded of the times along the way when maybe someone else has watered, someone else has planted, and we get to gather the harvest. Or sometimes we go out and plant, and we don't get to see the results. And that's okay, because it's truly up to God. So the disciples were just advanced men for Jesus. That's all they really were. That's all we really are. But we have this privilege, we have this opportunity to share the good news of Jesus. And we also need to be aware that sometimes people might reject us. That there will be costs involved. And that's okay. We need to understand that investing our lives and those around us should be the priority. That will be exhilarating at times and deflating at other times. But it's a daily journey. It's a daily calling. It's daunting and challenging, but our burden is light because we've been yoked with Jesus in this mission. And the forces of hell cannot stand against this mission. So be missionaries. Take it out from this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.
We rise as we confess our faith with the whole church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, let us pray for the Church, creation, and all in need. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing. We pray for missionaries who accompany your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Guide the work of climate scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance. Motivate us to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the earth. God of grace. Amen. You guard the nations, O oh God. Let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate classism and inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. God of grace. Amen. You desire abundant life for all, O oh Lord. As we celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude and generosity and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. God of grace. grace. Mother in God, you care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry. Restore employment for those who have lost work. Heal those who are sick. Comfort all who are dying or grieving. Especially today we remember Carrie and Tom, Donna, Mark and Cindy, Juliana, Linda, Lori, Sandy, Pastor Sarah, Jim, David, Lietta, Bob, Amy, Rudy, Rod, John, David, Mary and Alan, Laura, Tim, Sharon, Alyssa, Dennis, Kara, Monty, the family of Tom and Betty Campbuller, and Mary Kelly. Our confirmation class, Aubrey Bauer, Braden Bauer, Claire Cousineau, Michael Cousineau, Michael Longerbauer, Lamar Longerbauer, and all those struggling with COVID-19 all over the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember the saints who proclaimed your reign on earth and now rest in you. Make us faithful in our witness to Christ's new creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your spirit, We entrust those spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. May be seated for the offering.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way to us for everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who, tr we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We feast on God's meal of love for us together.
Congregation, please rise. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and your mercy strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, my Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Peace, serve the Lord.